So you're thinking of moving into Phoenix, Arizona, or one of the surrounding cities, but you have no idea what it's like out here. Like, did you know we have a stupid motorist law? Did you know our main plant and all of our landscaping is highly poisonous or that we have a lot of UFO sightings? Stay tuned. I'm going to give you six of the craziest things you never knew about Phoenix. So let's talk about the first item on my list, which is Phoenix is known for UFO sightings. So back in 1997 in March, we had what we call the Phoenix lights. It was these crazy, huge, basically spaceships in the sky that everyone saw. Okay. I was in high school at the time. I saw them. People have recordings. They have videos. Bright lights in a V shape, maybe a massive ship miles wide right over Phoenix. Hundreds, maybe thousands of people saw them on March 13th, 1997. Look at that. There's another one. They're lined up in, in a pattern. Four years later, I got four of them. We still don't know what the Phoenix lights were. Major sighting here. But now a lot Here's, more people. We still don't have answers on exactly what it was. Um, you know, the government comes out and says that it was something from them. Recently, they've released all their UFO stuff. So maybe it's in there. It was a really crazy time. Our governor at the time, which was Fife Symington, jokingly blamed it on a, another political uh, person who came out in an alien costume. And anyhow, that didn't go over well, though he later admitted he did have an encounter with an alien spacecraft. So who knows if it was real, if it wasn't. We've also had sightings in 2007 and 2008. And, you know, we're not that far from Roswell, New Mexico, right? So maybe they're, I don't know, flying over here. But anyhow, there is a lot of alien lovers out here, a lot of UFO, um, you know, investigators. We are really big and known for that. You can join a UFO Facebook group. You guys can go on hikes at night and start to get into paranormal stuff as well. So anyhow, kind of a weird thing, kind of a cool thing as well. And I will show you guys at the end of the video something that I personally have that relates back to these UFO sightings in high school. It is hilarious. You would probably never guess it. So stay tuned until the end if you want to see what that is. But that is item number one, you guys, UFO sightings in Phoenix. Okay, you guys, number two that I want to talk about are oleanders. Oleanders are beautiful, beautiful plants. They can grow up to 20 feet high. A lot of people use them in their backyard or their front yard almost as like a gate because you can't see through them because they get big and full and they have beautiful flowers, but they are highly, highly poisonous. Um, pets get sick. Humans can get sick, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and they can be poisonous. They can just really get into your bloodstream and make you so ill. You have to go to the hospital. However, we use them pretty much in everyone's yard ever. So if you are coming out here and you are purchasing a home, don't forget, I am Andrea Sheppy, by the way. I am a Phoenix native, full-time real estate agent with HomeSmart on the number one team in the nation. And I would love to help you guys, but you got to reach out. So definitely notice if you have oleanders in your yard, because even though they smell so good and they are so, so beautiful, they can be poisonous. They can make you very, very sick. So definitely keep an eye out for that and um, make sure that you are aware if you have that in your household. So that is item number two. We do have poisonous plants out here. All right, you guys, item number three, we have a law called the stupid motorist law. And it pretty much is what it sounds like. Okay. So when we get rain, when we get our monsoons, we have certain areas and certain streets and they dip down and they're meant to do that. And they'll have a ditch that opens up and that's where the water drains. Okay. To three feet high. There's a lake out here and there's road, but you can't even tell the difference where the road ends and where the lake begins. When it, when it floods like this, we tell people do not drive through this yet. It continues to happen. We have captain Dave Folio with the Scottsdale fire department. How many rescues have crews done out here in the last 24 hours? Yeah, in the last 24 hours, we've actually actually had seven rescues. Four of those rescues, we've actually had to send our technical rescue swift water crews into the water to remove uh, victims that are in their vehicles. The water is moving so much faster underneath than it looks on the surface. So we have many signs around the valley that say, do not cross when flooded. However, many people really think they can get through it. No big deal. Well, if there is a sign that says do not pass when flooded, or if it's blocked off and you go through and get stuck, 
you can call the fire department. You can call 911. They will come and rescue you. But we're now being charged with this stupid motorist law. And that means you have to pay for pretty much 100% of your rescue. So the city is not going to pay to rescue someone who clearly violates a law that is put there to protect us. So that is something you're going to want to be aware of, like the Indian Bend, Washington, Scottsdale. Don't cross it. You will get charged with a stupid motorist law. You will be safe, hopefully, but um, you will have quite a large fee to pay. So anyhow, that is item number three. All right, you guys, number four. Did you know Arizona has casinos? Yes, we have a ton. It brings in so much tourism. They're really, really fun. They do concerts. They do big pool parties with DJs. They're very like Vegas style. They're always busy, obviously 24 hours a day. They do shows, the um, Showstoppers Live with the impersonators. And that was fantastic. It had Elvis. And a lot of these casinos, because they're owned by Native Americans, they have beautiful areas where they display their culture and their heritage and just information on basically the land that you're on. So not only is it really fun if you enjoy casinos, it also can be educational. You know, you can take your kids there for events. So there is so many cool things about having all these casinos. And a lot of them, you guys are literally within our communities in a way where they're just being built in as entertainment areas to go. So anyhow, most people have no idea of that. It's tons of tourism. And of course, we have a lot of retirees out here. And that is one of the reasons they come down here. So that is the next item I wanted to talk about. All right, you guys, the next one I want to talk about affects Arizona State University, and it affects the sorority life, the Greek life there. And it sounds so silly, but Arizona State has never had sorority houses like you see at University of Arizona in Tucson and um, or like you see in the South where they're really beautiful. We have sorority dorms and, you know, they're they're nice enough, but they are a dorm. They're not the big, beautiful houses. So if you're looking to rent a home with a bunch of your girlfriend, it never has been overturned. And maybe one day ASU will rally for it so they can build sorority houses. Not really sure. But anyhow, such a... Um, interesting law that we have out here, but I bet you didn't know that. So keep that in mind when you're moving out here. All right, you guys, the final thing I want to talk about is, did you know when it's over 117 degrees, which like this past July and right now in August, we had the most record-breaking days over 115, the air gets too thin, planes aren't as efficient, Sometimes planes can't take off at all. It's dangerous. It's not safe. If we continue to heat up out here, who knows what might happen? July might be a no fly month. I don't know. But usually what they do is instead of a plane holding like 180 passengers, they'll drop it to like 120 passengers to make it light enough in order to safely take off in these high temperatures. So if you are thinking of moving out here or even visiting and you're flying, make sure you book those flights for morning or late, late evening. Now the hottest time of day out here is usually about four to 5 PM. Okay. And then our nights stay warm. Of course, mornings are always cooler. So definitely think about that with your flight. Again, these are things you need to know. If you're thinking of living out here, I am from here. I am 41 years old. I have been here my whole life, lived, worked, played, and I'm a full-time agent, you guys. So definitely reach out to me. I've got all the goods for you. I have a relocation guide sent to you for free, buyer's guide, seller's guide, whatever you guys need. I'm here to help. I love Phoenix so much. You guys, I promise to tell you, if you stay till the end of the video, something that had to do with me. Well, growing up, I loved the paranormal. I loved aliens. I loved UFOs. I loved ghosts. I actually have some really cool stories about ghost hunting and um, spirituality that if you get to know me, I will tell you guys later, this is not a channel for that, but I do have paranormal experiences and, and I kind of related it more to aliens. So there was a long running joke that I loved aliens. I also loved to dance. I was a gymnast growing up as well as on cheer and palm. And I loved John Travolta and all of his dancing movies. So I have a hilarious tattoo that I got when I turned 18 of an alien doing the disco just to represent spirituality, paranormal um, energy fields and my love of dance and movement and all of those cool things. And that is just a little bit about me. Thanks for staying to the end of the video, you guys, to find that out. And don't forget to reach out if you need anything about the Phoenix Metro real estate market. I would love to help. See you guys in my next video. Thank you.
but I've been scarred. 